Hello everyone, welcome back to another video and in today's video I'm going to be teaching you how to do the Mob of the Dead Easter Egg and uh, for this Easter Egg you will need, and you must have this, two or more players you cannot do this Easter Egg solo uh, so please bear that in mind while you're trying to do this and basically yes, this will be a step-by-step -step guide on how to do this Easter Egg it's a short Easter Egg, so for you people that don't have a lot of time to spare on Easter Eggs then um, this is probably your ideal Easter Egg really uh, it's very quick to do, especially if you're good at the map. Uh, the last thing I want to add in here is all of these um, things that I'm going to be telling you now will be up on my channel uh, very soon as tutorials, but they're not up just yet. Uh, and that is, these are the other things that you can do and uh, take with you for the boss fight or just in general for um, the fight, if you like, in, in this uh, Easter egg or just if you want them for the easter egg and that is the golden spork um, the hell's retriever which I recommend everybody has anyway at least that uh, the hell's redeemer which is an upgraded version of the hell's retriever um, and also you will one of you should at least really have this anyway um, the upgraded blundergat so make sure you make it the acid gat and all that as well um, and I recommend that you all have that so yes basically uh, that's just things that you can have you don't have to have those but what you obviously do have to have like I said before is two or more players to be able to do this easter egg so please bear that in mind um, but otherwise that's this year all the beginning prerequisites of your life for this easter egg uh, so we're going to get on with the step by step guide so I'll see you in the first step okay so for this next step, um, you're going to need to collect all the parts in order to build the plane, basically. Uh, and this is the first step of the Easter egg, is to actually build the plane on the roof and uh, fly to the Golden Gate Bridge. But the first thing you'll need before you can actually even go and build the plane and get the parts is the key. Uh, the warden's key, to be specific. Uh, you can get this from two sides of the map. One, which you're seeing on screen right now, is by the cafeteria, and the other one is over by the warden's office. It's very easy to get to them. Literally, just open up through uh, from the spawn through to the middle where you find the first dog head for the Hell's Retriever. Keep going through there, and then you can go up either end easily from there uh, to either the cafeteria or the warden's office. And uh, basically this is just me showing you guys how you actually get the key because uh, a lot of people don't understand how to get the key because obviously they would see the key but they don't know how to actually get it down so that they can pick it up. Uh, it's very simple, literally all you're seeing me do here is go into afterlife mode so make sure you have one of those uh, available and then just run up to this little blue hole in the wall that you see in afterlife mode, run to the end where this generator is, zap it and then the key should fall down and you should be able to walk up and pick it up. Uh, what this key will do, just to clarify this for people, is open up things with a big padlock on them. Uh, it does not open up the uh, other doors on the map that um, you have to pay for with points. Those you do have to pay for with points, it does not open up those for free. So uh, don't get that idea in your head. This is only when you see a big padlock on a door, there are quite a few of them around the map and you're going to see them when I go through the playing parts. Um, but now that I've shown you this area, I just want to quickly show you uh, the area of which the warnings key would be. Um, you will not see the key actually in this next clip because I didn't have the key there obviously, I had it over by the cafeteria in this game. But you will at least see uh, where you need to go in order to get the key down. So I will move on to that, and then after that we're going to move on to all the plane parts. So I'll see you in that bit. Okay, so this is the other side by the warden's office where you can find the key. Again, if you go into afterlife mode over here, uh, when you look up top you will see this big blue hole in the wall. When you jump through this hole you'll see a generator to the left here. I run past it because obviously my key isn't there. But if you go over to that generator, which you'll see again here now, that generator there on the right, and zap that, then the key will fall down and you'll be able to pick it up. <clears throat> Bear in mind the key can spawn randomly on either side, by the cafeteria or by the warden's office uh, per game. 
It is completely random where it spawns, so just keep an eye out. It's a pretty obvious golden thing there too. But while we're here, I also wanted to show you how to actually open up the Warren's office because some people don't know how to do that. So again, you just jump up here, run down to the end there and zap that little control thing. <clears throat> the little panel and then it will open up that gate which is uh, normally locked and that's the only way to open up that gate. So yes, if you want to get inside there, which you will need to for uh, not just the plain part but also a blue skull later on, uh, then this is how you do so and I hope that helps out anybody that doesn't know how to do it. So anyway, um, that's the two locations for the key. I'll now be moving on to all the plain parts and how to get them. Okay, so the first thing that I wanted to say here before I begin this bit is I'm not collecting any of these parts uh, in any specific order and you do not need to collect them in any specific order. You can collect them in any order that you like, it's just I am starting from basically the docks and working my way up in this video. Uh, so the first main part I'm going to get are the oxygen tanks and these are down right at the bottom by the docks. Uh, you will obviously need to have the key for this bit and you saw there on that big metal gate there was a big padlock uh, if you just walk up to that padlock it should allow you to open it with your interactive button of fx or square and uh, it will then unlock the gate and you don't need any points for that just to clarify that uh, the other thing that you don't see here which um, was an error on my part so i'm sorry about that is you will need to go into afterlife mode and shut that panel on the left there as there will be another gate that is normally shut and this will open up that gate for you so you can run through and pick up the part uh, there so on your actual game you should see another gate there blocking your path as well go to afterlife mode there there's a control panel the red one on the left and then you can just go into that mode and zap the uh, little control panel there on your left and then the gate will open and then obviously revive yourself and pick up the part uh, but yeah, this is the oxygen tank and it's pretty simple to pick up. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to just tell you here now, <clears throat> there's two bits here. One, um, if you're playing on a co-op game, you can only pick up one playing item per player. So uh, if I pick up, for example, these oxygen tanks here, I can't pick up another item until I place this item on the plane. Um, whereas if you're playing solo, of course, you can pick up as many parts as you like. So please bear this in mind while you're doing this Easter egg, as it is obviously a co-op Easter egg, and that only uh, one team member can pick up a part at once unless they build a part on the plane on the roof. So please bear that in mind. Uh, the other thing, other than you really need to con uh, conserve sorry, your um, afterlifes in order to unlock a lot of these things, is uh, try and stay somewhat together on the map, just because this is mostly a warning for me, telling you that the zombies on Mob of the Dead tend to just despawn completely and then the next wave will begin. Uh, so please uh, be careful and bear that in mind. Uh, obviously one of my team members here was actually way too far away and I was quite lucky to actually have the zombie spawn on me um, which is not normally the case and I'm just telling you this now because it's quite important and uh, I want you guys to be aware of it so do keep that in mind when you're doing this easter egg otherwise that's it for this playing part um, and we will move on to the next playing part. Okay, so the next part I'm going to be showing you is the um, rope or wire. I'm not actually sure what it precisely is. I believe it is actually rope. Um, and to get this, as you can see, you need to be in the tunnels, um, which are located just literally above the docks. Um, and you will need to go to the bottom of this tunnel up to this number dial thing here and you will need to first of all unlock it make sure you unlock it before you do this afterlife step that you're seeing here or else you're going to be a bit of an idiot and waste an afterlife um, so make sure you go down to the bottom there and unlock the uh little chain lock thing that's locking your uh, ability to zap the thing uh, then go up to the top of the tunnel and go into afterlife mode when you go into afterlife mode, what you should see while you run down 
on these little walls uh, to your left while you're running down the tunnel uh, are these numbers, which will be all blue because you're in afterlife mode. Uh, the numbers I like to point out are random every game, so do not copy the numbers that you see in this clip because it will probably be different for you in your game. You'd be lucky if they are the right ones anyway. <laughs> um, but you will see three numbers while you run down this tunnel. And uh, when you see these numbers, you need to remember them in their exact order. So remember them in that order. So five, three, uh, seven here. When you get to the bottom here, zap this little uh, dial thing to put the numbers that you see on the wall in, in their specific order. And when you do this, you should hear a beeping noise and also a tzzz sort of thing. And uh, the lift that is holding the rope will collapse down. Then what you need to do is revive yourself, run down to the bottom of this tunnel again, and uh, keep going down through these stairs, as you can see here, and then take a left when you get to the bottom of this staircase, and then you'll go to the bottom of the lift here, open the doors, and pick up the rope. And then you have the rope part. The other thing I just wanted to tell you guys, so you know this and you bear this in mind, is uh, this step is actually on a timer. So as soon as you activate it with your zaps, you have, I believe, uh, I believe it's 50 seconds, maybe less, uh, to go and pick up this part. If you don't pick up the part within that amount of time, it will mean that you will need to go into afterlife mode and input some new numbers, uh, which will be on the wall all over again. And then you'll put in the new numbers and then the lift will fall down again and you can go and pick up the part. But it will be time, so I suggest you uh, do it near the end of the wave this bit um, rather than during a wave. So just bear that in mind. You only have 50 seconds to pick up this part. Otherwise, that's it for this part. So now we'll be moving on to the washing machine room part. Okay, so this is the washing machine room part. The washing machine room is located just opposite of the Hell's Retriever and uh, just above the tunnel where we just were with the tunnel part. Uh, in order to get this part, you will need first of all go and unlock the cage door where the washing machine is with the warden's key. Uh, once you do this, you will then need to go to the opposite end of the room and go into afterlife mode. Once in afterlife mode, you will then need to go into that room where the washing machine is and zap the little panel on the opposite side of the uh, room where the washing machine normally is. Once you do this, revive yourself, come back to the washing machine and interact with it with either FX or Square. This will start a lockdown uh, procedure if you'd like. And uh, what this will do, and this is something that I wanted to really get across to everyone, is uh, spawn in a mini wave, which I call the washing machine wave. But um, it's up to you what you want to call it. Uh, what you will get is a lot of zombies spawning in. You will also not be able to leave the room in any way whatsoever. So if you're trying to leave, you can't. Um, you will have to stay in this place. And I recommend you just stay where the washing machine is. It's really not that hard. Um, make sure you obviously have a lot of ammo before you do this or else you're going to die. Um, but yes, basically you just need to stand by the washing machine. It will keep washing the uh, clothes and uh, you will get a mini wave spawn in. So if you kill a zombie, like the last zombie that you're holding, don't worry because it won't end the wave as you will still be having a load more zombies spawning in, so it makes no difference. Um, but obviously what I do recommend, and I recommend this to everyone really, is uh, while you're doing the washing machine wave, don't do anything heroic for a starter, like running around where all the dead bodies are. Stay inside where the washing machine is, it's much safer in there. Uh, Next of all, I obviously recommend that near the end of the wave, like the mini washing wave, you uh, save at least a zombie, which would be a good idea. You don't have to, but I would recommend it. Um, and also, just a little hint, you can tell when the washing uh, machine is done because all the smoky, foggy mist that you get in the room will disappear. And then it will just be like the room normally was from before. Uh, once the washing machine is done, then you should notice your part for the plane is inside of it and the door will be open for the washing machine. It will be grey and green and you just walk up to it and pick it up. And um, Once you pick it up then you obviously now have the uh, 
I believe it's meant to be cloves, but I'm really not certain what they're trying to put on the plane, really. But uh, yeah, it'll basically be the top bit for the wing. Um, and yeah, well, that's this part. So the next part I'm going to be showing you is actually located in two places, but I will obviously talk about that when we get to it. And uh, the main place where it's located is up in the warden's office. Okay, so for this plane part, the first thing you're going to need to do is be down at the docks and specifically you need to be where the dog head normally is where you would fill up the uh, dog head with soles to get the hell's retriever uh, because the room that's right opposite the dog head that you can go inside of um, is where you would need to zap some generators in order to unlock this door which is located all the way up top by the warden's office um, if you do not zap these generators by the way when you go up to the warden's office door there um, where the plane part is, it will just be covered in electricity and you won't be able to touch it and it will hurt you. So um, in this room, go into afterlife mode as you can see where I was and zap the generators which have blue lines, like the blue wiry lines uh, going into them. They're very obvious when you look at the floor and when you zap them all then it will turn off the electricity on the door. There are three generators all together by the way and one of the generators, if you didn't notice, there is through a wall so please bear that in mind. Um, I will quickly talk about it over here as we're actually at this part on this clip. Um, as you can see, there's the first generator that I've seen there near the gate. Then there's another one which is like right in front of uh, that bit there. There's the little gateway that you can see and then right through the end there is the final generator. Uh, once you electrocute all these generators, go up to the one's office and go to this door where there was a padlock unlock it with a wand key and there you will find the engines which are just sitting on a little table uh, and then go and pick them up and that's it you've managed to get this part so uh well done <laughs> and now we'll be moving on to the last part i believe which is the roof part which is really not that difficult to get but i'm still going to show you it anyway so uh, we'll move on to that now okay so the final part is up on the roof and this is literally just below the actual roof itself um, and this is where you normally fill the dog head of course um, which is how you get the souls so what you will need to do is literally come up to that room where the dog head is and if you have the warden's key then you just need to run over to this little cabinet here unlock it and then you can pick up the part which is i believe the fuel cans um, and that's literally it and yeah then you have it i just thought i'd show in this clip as well what it's like when you build the uh plane but you're about to see all of that anyway with a fully built plane uh the other thing that i wanted to talk about here and i haven't put it in this tutorial and i was debating about putting it in or not but i will talk you through it um is in order to open up the roof you will need to do an afterlife mode and uh with that, when you're inside that room down the bottom where the dog head is, if you go to that red panel which is on the left here in this clip, uh, you can see it there and activate it and then you run back here where I am, there's this door that will normally be on the right um, which will have a little hole in it and then you can run in there in afterlife row, jump up to the roof where there's a hole and then come over to the uh, door of the roof and zap it and uh, when you zap this little control panel there then it will open the door to the roof so that you can access the roof um but yeah that that's literally it so this is all the plane parts i'm going to quickly show you a little clip of what the plane looks like when it's fully built and uh, also explain that you obviously need to fly the plane and stuff before we get on to the main next step so um yeah let's go on with that right so this is a fully built plane just so that you guys can see it there it is as you can see uh, i'm also going to be showing you here me flying over to the golden gate bridge with my buddy as well <laughs> and you also get to see a neat little uh, funny thing that you can do with a uh, hell's retriever while taking off uh, just for a laugh but anyway um i want to explain some of the next steps so one thing that I want to explain is the next step I'm going to go over is actually the blue skulls that you will need to pick up. And this is where you will need the Hell's Retriever. So you have to have made the Hell's Retriever. Um, so make sure you obviously make that. Um, 
And basically what you need to do is throw the Hell's Retriever and pick up these blue skulls. Now this is where I want to quickly talk about this here. There's a lot of people in the past that said that you need to go to the Golden Gate Bridge at least once before you can pick up these blue skulls. That is not the case. They're getting this confused with the poster for the Golden Spork. Uh, yes, you need to go to the bridge at least once for that poster to be removed for the Golden Spork. But in the case of the blue skulls, which is what you need for the Easter egg, you do not have to visit the bridge before you can get them. You can get them before you go to the bridge. You just have to have the Tomahawk or you know, the Hell's Retriever. So make sure you help uh, that. And obviously, if you need a tutorial on how to do that, I will be making one. It will be going up on my channel shortly. But I'm expecting most people to know how to do that for this Easter egg. Um, so I just want to address that because it's quite important. The other thing I want to address here too is while you're doing the blue skull step, I really recommend this to everyone that you keep flying to the bridge. Make sure both people are on the plane or all four or whoever's playing um, while you go to the bridge or else this will not work. Um, is keep building the plane every other round and flying to the bridge and you have to get there at least three times for the step that we will need later on so the earlier you can get on with that the better really and uh, yes like I said make sure you have all layers fly over to the bridge because if it's just one person it doesn't work you need all the players to go over to the bridge so make sure you do that um, but I recommend you do this while you're just you know, mucking around with the blue skulls and that it's worthwhile doing it as early as you can. You only need to go to the bridge three times, bear that in mind, right? Three times before you need to do that next step. But I will get onto that step later. First, though, we're going to go through the blue skulls, so I'm going to go on about that now. Okay, so what you're going to see in the background is me collecting the blue skulls. So, again, for this step, you will need the Hell's Retriever. So make sure you have got that uh, from feeding the dog heads and picked it up. Uh, only one person needs to go and collect these blue skulls, but you can have multiple people collecting them if you wish. It's entirely up to you. Um, so the places that you will need to go in order to pick up these skulls are as follows. Now I'm doing it from the bottom of the map upwards. Uh, you don't have to do it in this order. It can be in any order you like. But uh, the order that you will need, or at least the places that you need to go even are the docks over by one of the uh, jetties so that's what I call it anyway um, up by Jug over by the warden's office in a small little prison cell right outside of spawn and finally up on the roof and all you need to do as you can see here is come to these places hold the hills retriever down and throw it and for the following locations that you see that I'm throwing it at, and then you should see that the Hell's Retriever should return back to you along with a blue skull. Um, if you don't see the blue skull, then either you've already got the skull at some point, or you just haven't aimed it in the right spot, uh, or you're just not hitting it very well. Um, so just try and keep going until you get the blue skull. So just keep throwing it, and altogether there are five blue skulls, like I just said. Once you've collected all five, go into the warden's office, and what you should see come out of his desk is a blunder gap. And you'll see that the desk will light on fire, as you can see here, and there's the blunder gap. This blunder gap will be free, so uh, the player that needs it the most, I recommend to pick it up. And in the case of this game, it wasn't me, it was actually my friend. So he uh, picked up the blunder gap from the table. Uh, but what you could do, obviously, is when you get this blunder gap, upgrade it and things like that. It's entirely up to you. Um, but you have to do this step. Even if you don't want a free blunder gap, you still have to do this step in order for the main Easter egg step later on to work. So uh, make sure you do that. I do not believe that you have to pick up the blunder gap. Just to confirm that, you just have to get the blue skull to the definite and run into the warden's office to make the blunder gap spawn. Um, also, just a warning for anybody that's wondering, when you do pick up the blunder gap from um, the warden's office, you will hear the warden say something which um, is rather creepy for some people. But anyway, 
Uh, I think he just says that I'm going to have revenge on you, <laughs> just just in case you were worried that he spawns in the map. He doesn't. It's just uh, part of the Easter egg. Um, so yeah, there you go. And that's it for the blue skull step. So again, at the end of this step here, I just want to clarify what you will need for the next step to actually work in the first place. And that is to have built the plane and flown over to the Golden Gate Bridge at least three times. And all players must do this because else this will not work. What we're trying to aim for is to get some spinning dials in the uh, little tunnel area where you zap that dial thing uh, earlier on you will need some spinning dials when you come back so if you don't hear the dial spinning if you've been to the Golden Gate Bridge three times on the plane go back to the Golden Gate Bridge again because it's likely that one of the players has not gone over with you uh, which is probably causing the problem in the first place this is why I said make sure all players go on the plane over to the bridge you will need them to and it has to be three times, all right? <laughs> so <laughs> I really have to clarify this bit, of course, because so many people get this wrong. Um, so yes, make sure you do that. The other thing that I also want to play quickly before I do that, and it's just a little mini clip, just so people uh, understand this, is the plane parts that you got earlier. After you've been to the Golden Gate Bridge once, when you come back and they respawn, they will respawn as fuel cans rather than the parts that you saw earlier on and they will spawn in different places which I just want to briefly uh, explain for everyone so that nobody gets confused um, so I'm going to do that just quickly before we move on to the spinning dial step right, like I said this is nothing special here this bit is just me explaining for people that might get confused uh, how the plane parts spawn back in later on after you've been to the Golden Gate Bridge once and you return back so I want to go over a few little things in this bit. So number one, when you come back from the Golden Gate Bridge, you will notice that the plane is not up on the roof straight away if you go up there. Um, it will spawn back in if you end the round and you'll be able to refuel the plane during that round. That's why I said every other round, basically, you can fly to the bridge. Um, so yeah, bear that in mind. And again, you have to go over three times, all players. <laughs> I'm going to keep repeating this until people get this right. <laughs> anyway, um, what you will notice is when these plane parts spawn back in after you've been to the bridge once is there will be now will be fuel cans. Uh, every single one of them will be fuel cans and they'll be somewhat in the same places. There are two in particular that I want to talk about that spawn in different places. One of them you see on the screen now which is the rope that you got earlier on will now spawn next to the dials rather than in that little lift at the bottom which means you don't have to go and zap those dials again in order to get the thing to drop down you can just run to the bottom of the tunnels and pick up the fuel now which is much nicer uh, the second part which is the only other part I believe changes its spot or location is uh, down at the docks um, where you saw the oxygen tanks earlier on uh, Normally they were originally right at the back of that little uh, cage area. They will now spawn right at the front where the lock gate actually was. Um, so they'll be right in the front there so you can pick them up straight away and you don't have to go into afterlife or anything like that for any of these parts anymore. They're very easy to pick up. And that is the only other one that changes. The others as far as I'm aware spawn in exactly the same places as they did before, but I wanted to do explain that for these fuel cans because it's important uh, that people know this and yes they are all fuel cans so don't be alarmed if you see this uh, but again you will need to pick up all five of them and refuel the plane by going back to the roof and putting the parts on the plane uh, which will then obviously let you fly back to the Golden Gate Bridge and obviously like I keep saying make sure you go across the bridge all players three times for this next step which is the spinning dials to work if you do not hear spinning dials within this little tunnel area when you come back on your third time it is probably because one of the players has not gone to the bridge uh, this has happened countless times in the past when i've done this with other people 
and it's very annoying because people are not very self-aware half of the time when it comes to you know knowing whether they've been on the bridge or not which is why i recommend that you all go at once so once you've been to the bridge three times and uh, you've come back then you should notice in the tunnel there will now be some spinning dials and that is the next step that i'm going to go on to now all right so this is the spinning dial step you should notice when you come down to the tunnel now that the dials that are at the bottom will be spinning random numbers that's good <laughs> right so what you will want to do this is great if you have um three players and two players it works as well is that one player needs to go into the afterlife mode at the top of the tunnel there and run down and start zapping these dials but what i recommend you do is you have one of the players also slowly reviving that person in afterlife mode but not fully reviving them never let them fully revive you uh, what this will do is this will give you more afterlife time so you can go and zap these dials all in one go. Uh, unfortunately, my friend who was in the game here died, and as a result, I had to do it all on my own, so I couldn't put them all in at once in one go, uh, which was a bit of a pain in the ass. But yeah, uh, hopefully you guys will be able to do that in your game. So, so let the person basically slowly revive you, but don't let them fully revive you. Uh, also, if you have perks and they fully revive you, you will lose the perks, so don't let them do that. Even when the step is finished, when you finish putting in the dem uh, numbers into this dial, you go up and revive your own body or else you will lose your perks, so don't let that happen. Right, anyway, so the numbers that you will need to enter in when you're in afterlife mode, and they have to be done in this order specifically, are 872, 101, 386 and 481. Put them in in that exact order, and then when you finish this step, you will hear the Brutus voice say, So you want to know the truth. And that means that you'll move on to the next step. And you should notice once the uh, afterlife person revives himself, that the screen for all players will go into black and white mode, and you will hear Stanley Ferguson. Uh, doing his interview report with the reporter from Shadows of Evil and you will obviously be going into some of these audio quotes later on which I'm going to explain in the next uh, clip for you and let you listen to as well um, but the other thing I want to let you know in case you wanted to do this the more traditional way is uh, these numbers are actually on the character's chest so if you just look at each character you will see their number uh, or their specific cell number, anyway. Um, so, yeah, look at the chests of the characters if you have four people, if you want to know it that way. But I told you the numbers in the order you need to put them in anyway, so it's better if you just follow that. But it's always a good thing to know, and it's interesting to figure out. Um, so there will be four numbers, obviously, to put in, and once you've done them all, then, like I said, you will hear Brutus say, uh, say you want to know the truth, and that means you've done it correctly. Um, right, so the next step will be running into some small little glowing headphones and uh, I'm going to tell you where those are located so you can go do that um, and I also will let you guys listen to the whole of that next bit uh, so you guys that want to know the story and that can listen to it all uh, without me talking over it. But first of all I'm going to explain where the headphone locations are so I'm going to move on to that now. Okay, so this is me explaining the headphone step like i said i will let you guys listen to all of this uh, with volume so you guys can hear it if you want to know the story later on and i must also apologize for the sound of the zombies and that in the background while you're listening to these unfortunately i am not able to turn down the volume for the zombies and that as it is exactly the same volume as the uh, audio log so I'm sorry about that but hopefully the audio of uh, the audio logs is good enough so that you guys can hear it pretty well but there you go um, anyway I'm going to explain how this all works so first of all as soon as you uh, the player that basically did the zapping for the dials uh, revives themselves from afterlife you will see that the black and white uh, screen will appear on every player's uh, screen and they should hear Stanley Ferguson, the guard, talking to the reporter, Mr. Rat, or whatever he was called again. Um, and then you will basically hear all of this going on, like this interview and stuff. Uh, and once you hear that first one, 
uh, when it finishes you will notice that the screen will go back to color this will happen every time that you pick up one of the headphones it will go into black and white and then when it finishes it will go into color again so uh, just to let you know that also you can't pick up another headphone set until the one that you're listening to has finished so also bear that in mind too but I'm going to explain where each headphone is located so everybody uh, can find them really easily so the first pair of headphones these are little green glowing headphones by the way they're like power up drops but yeah they'll just be sitting there that you can run into and pick them up um, so the first location is the spiral staircase leading upwards from the tunnel um, so what you will notice is that the um, the stairs that you go up from the spiral staircase there will be a pair of headphones in that staircase there and you can just run into those uh, the next pair of headphones will be the first room on the lower ground level from the warden's office so uh, when you this is the best way to explain this um, you're going to constantly be going upwards to get these headphones okay so when you get the pair of headphones that were in that staircase from earlier I told you about just keep going upwards past double tap and in that room um, basically in that room anyway there is a pair of headphones that you can pick up uh, run into those headphones there and you will notice those ones are the next pair of headphones the third pair of headphones is the uh, cell blocks at the opposite end of the warden's office so uh, as you're going away from the warden's office towards the cafeteria uh, run up those stairs and go along the walkway towards the cafeteria and you will notice the third set of headphones there um, and then the next set of headphones is up by the infirmary so the best way to get there in my opinion but you can go there two ways so I'll explain both uh, the best way is to go by the cantina so you just carry on going through the cantina and go to the little door on the left before you go fully into the cantina you'll be able to go up some stairs up towards the roof and you will notice the headphones will be right in that doorway as soon as you get to the top of the stairs uh, the other way around from there is if you go by the electric cherry route uh, and you run past the buildable table where you can build either the shield or the acid gap uh, you just keep running along that walkway and eventually you will end up inside the infirmary room up the top and that's where the headphones will be and then finally the last pair of headphones are literally by the door uh, that you would walk through to get to the roof and uh, once you walk into those ones you will obviously hear the last bit of Stanley Ferguson doing his interview and stuff and uh, well when it finishes you should hear some laughing sounds it's normally like the sound of Samantha laughing and that and you will hear that so uh, there you go and the other thing that you may have noticed in the clip that's been playing in the background when you get to the roof stage is uh, I was pointing my uh, acid gap at the floor where that little hut was on the roof uh, where you saw some blood there just as a story background for people so that they know the actual real story uh, is that that hut is where the inmates killed weasel and that's where they put his dead body inside that hut however um obviously in the map you all go across to the bridge and you fight each other over there but the real story is basically they kill weasel up top there and put his body inside that hut which is why there's blood going into that hut that's the reference for it there just for the people that are interested in the story anyway um, what I will do now is I'll let you guys listen to this whole step with the audio so you guys can hear Stanley Ferguson's little uh, interview uh, so that you guys that like the story are interested in that can uh, hear all that and then you also hear the Samantha like laugh at the end and then that will bring me on to the last step which is uh, very important steps. <laughs> I will move on to that after you've heard the audios. My name is Stanley Ferguson. I was a guard at Alcatraz from 1933 to 1942. Today, I'm going to give you some insight into one of the very first cases in history. Over the decades, Alcatraz has seen more than its fair share of daring escape attempts. However, few were as audacious as those that were undertaken by the four inmates. 
thought to be the brainchild of an inmate by the name of Albert Arlington, the outrageous scheme was as unlikely as its mastermind. It's believed that Arlington somehow convinced three other inmates that he had devised a such plane was ever built. Instead, the group's plans for freedom soon descended into bitter argument and infight. With the plan falling apart, anger and frustration would ultimately lead to a brutal altercation between the misguided Arlington and his former... I really need some lead! Armed only with makeshift weapons, Finn O'Leary, Sal DeLuca, and Billy Handsome lured the unsuspecting Arlington to the roof, where they intended to exact a bloody and violent revenge. And so it was here, beneath the dark and stormy winter skies, that the hapless Arlington met his grisly end, bleeding to death on the cold concrete roof. For their participation in the murder, the three collaborators were sent to death by electric chair. Justice came swiftly. On the morning of January 19, 1934, the execution order was carried out. Okay, so now that you've heard the audio quotes and that, it's time to move on to the final step of this Easter egg. Um, so, this is where it's difficult for a lot of people. <laughs> um, what you will need is to, first of all, all of you need to make sure you have refueled the plane. So make sure the plane is all refueled and ready to go. Then make sure every single player, and I mean every single player, has a afterlife available. If you do not have an afterlife available, you will need to literally get one by the start of the round and just go and do this step that you are seeing here on the screen, um, because otherwise you're just waiting for ever and ever so i recommend you do it at the start of a round if you have people that die a lot <laughs> um but anyway what you will need to do is you will need to be by the roof and you know that little room that we were in earlier where you fill up the dog head um on the roof is uh basically go up to that and uh hit the little red box which um will put you into afterlife mode all players need to do this and when you are all in afterlife mode, all of you run up to the plane. And now, this is where a lot of people find this bit a little bit difficult. Um, it is kind of a luck of the draw, really, for this. But the best thing that I've ever seen in the past, whenever I've done it, is that every player needs to run up to the back of the plane. But don't get right up next to the plane. Stay a little bit back from it and uh, use your interactive button fx or square it will not give you a prompt just to let you know you just do it yourself and uh, all players will need to do this when they're in that afterlife stage go up to the back of the plane like i said uh, interact with it and then you will all go onto the plane um, all of the afterlife people will be on the plane and uh, you'll be flying over the bridge in afterlife mode you will also have infinite afterlife mode when you are on that plane, so it will not run out. So you don't need to worry about that, so don't think you're going to die, because you're not. Um, you have infinite afterlife mode, so once you're on the plane in that afterlife mode, the plane is going to take off, it's going to go all the way over to the um, bridge. When it gets to the bridge, it will crash, obviously. And uh, what you should notice is as soon as you uh, get to the bridge and it crashes, the achievement pop goes, the weasel for doing the easter egg will pop up, um, but there's still more afterwards if you want to do it. Uh, so when you get to the bridge, you'll still be in afterlife mode. You need to run over to the electric chairs that you normally use to get off of the bridge and go and revive your character. And uh, once all the characters are revived, so you should notice that weasel will be on one opposite end of the bridge 
and the other mobsters, whoever you are, like if there's one of you or two of you or three of you, whatever, will be over by the electric chairs. And what you will need to do is kill Weasel. And Weasel, your objective is to kill the other mobsters. So there are two endings to this Easter egg. There is the good ending and then there's the bad ending. The good ending is when Weasel kills the mobsters. The bad ending is when the mobsters kill Weasel. Um, so the cycle is broken is when Weasel kills the mobsters. And then the cycle continues is when the mobsters kill Weasel. Uh, but basically what you need to do is fight each other on the bridge, of course. And another thing for you mobster people like Billy, uh, Finn and that, um, your, your characters need to be aware that the zombies won't attack uh, the character Weasel. And they will all help Weasel and uh, attack you instead. So do bear that in mind when you're fighting against Weasel. And this is the step where I obviously said and recommended at the beginning of the video to have like the uh, Golden Spork or the Hell's Redeemer, stuff like that. Because it's rather useful. I'd also like to point out that the Golden Spork, obviously it's one hit kill on all the zombies and Brutus most of the time and stuff. Uh, is actually a one hit kill on Weasel as well as the mobsters. So do bear that in mind. Uh, if you get the chance to. We didn't have the golden spork in this case and what we were aiming for was to get the perfect ending for you guys which is the cycle is broken um, which meant that obviously I had to die um, but I still wanted to obviously try and fight him in some shape or form <laughs> my friend but um, yes we were aiming to get the cycles broken here so that's what we did and uh, yeah well basically that's all there is to this bit and then once you fight each other depending what ending you get and you finish the easter egg what it will do is it will end the game for you and you'll hear some different music and that's literally about it like I said from before you will get the achievement or trophy depending what console you're on for uh, doing the easter egg straight away when you uh, whack the bridge normally um, in that afterlife stage which is Pop Goes the Weasel. And that'll be it. You may have also noticed, if you want to be able to get the electric cherry thing, um, get killed here as well. It's a great place to get that. <laughs> but once you've done this, then you finish the Easter egg, and that's all there is to it. It's the end of the Easter egg. Like I said, it's a quick Easter egg. It's not exactly hard or anything. And uh, yeah, that, that's all the steps for it. And you should get the achievement, Pop Goes the Weasel, which is for the full Easter egg. And there you go. That is the Mob and the Dead Easter egg. Um, I will actually play this boss fight here that we have for you uh, with volume, so you can just hear it and hear some of the quotes that uh, Sal and Weasel say to each other during the boss fight, in case you're interested. Um, and yeah, well, that'll be it, really. <laughs> So, yeah, this was a guide for the Mob of the Dead Easter Egg. I hope you guys found it useful. Uh, I hope I explained everything clear enough to you guys as well. If you get stuck at any point, then feel free to let me know by leaving a comment, uh, asking like a question about something you're stuck on or whatever. Or you could send me a tweet on Twitter, anything like that. It's entirely up to you. I will happily reply and help you out as best as I can. If you need players, of course, to do this Easter egg, then I recommend you start putting your gamer tags for whatever console you're on in the, descri uh, in the description, <laughs> in the comment section of the video, so you guys can go and uh, find some players to do this with. Especially if you're a solo player and you don't really get to find many players. I understand how tough it is for you, because <laughs> I'm more a solo person anyway. But yeah, um, so there you go, that, that's really all there is to it. I hope you guys did find this useful, guys. If you did, I would really appreciate it if you could smash the like button. It would mean the absolute world to me. After all, it does take a lot of time to make these Easter egg tutorials for you guys, especially the newer ones, which takes absolutely ages, to be honest, um, especially as I go into a lot of depth for them as well with you. So there you go. I will also say here at the end that you will have in the uh, description of the video a full step-by-step -step written process that I will write out for you guys uh, telling you each step as you go through it 
and uh, you could look at it via that if you don't want to watch the full video I completely understand that so you can look at it via that uh, I do this for all of my easter egg tutorials now so there you go um, and if you guys did enjoy this video and you want to see more videos like this and helpful tutorials like that then uh, hit the subscribe button to keep up to date with all the latest videos that I bring out and if you guys want to see more tutorials like this then please do let me know I know that there's been a lot of demand for the easter eggs, the main easter egg tutorials so uh, I am dedicating my time to put in some uh, big long tutorials for you guys which is the main easter eggs uh, so yeah there you go, That that's it So. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I will leave you now with the sound version of the boss fight, and uh, I will see you guys in my next video. So, see you then, guys. Bye. Be a son of a bitch! Look! Those things are protecting him! Visit him all over the fucking show. 